day guys and girls. So we are setting out on a trip from London, Ontario, Canada to Pittsburgh, Gettysburg, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So today we are going to be heading out from our home, London, Ontario. You can see we've got 100% on the charge. We got 473 kilometers and our destination is about 320 kilometers. We're actually heading for the uh, Tesla supercharge station in Fredonia, New York, which is about 320 kilometers away. And it's going to be the first time I'm trying. Uh, they call it the magic dock and it allows non-Tesla vehicles to charge at Tesla supercharging locations. So this is really exciting. And it's exciting because uh, there is only two. There's one in the state of New York and one in Pennsylvania. No, sorry, two in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, two in the state of New York. And that's the only two that I know of in that upper northern United States or part of the United States. So it's a very new thing. I think it's very common down in California is where they open it up first. But uh, yeah, we're going to see if it works out well. We've heard that their networks are really good. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be using the Electrify America network. We're, we're quite accustomed to the Electrify Canada network. It works very well. And the Ivy network, obviously, here in Canada. But uh, it's going to be a good, good little trip to see how Canadians can charge in the United States and, you know, see how we can manage this long, long trip with an EV where there's very little infrastructure in between, like between our house and uh, Pittsburgh. There's this charge point here in Fredonia. There's another one that's up here in Niagara Falls. And there's another one right here. And then you got to go all the way down to Pittsburgh, right to the outskirts of Pittsburgh to get to the next charge station. So there's legitimately three that are kind of in between. And then you got to wait for another two that are outside Pittsburgh. And I'm talking about fast chargers here. I'm not talking about level two chargers that would take us a day to charge up. You know, we're talking fast chargers. So the infrastructure really isn't there yet, but we've got this EV because we need it for work. We need it to get back and forth. We're tired of paying the gas prices. So stick around. I hope you enjoy the journey. I hope you learned something. We're going to try to show you any of the pitfalls and errors that we make. And, you know, hopefully we have a, a clean, safe trip. So stay tuned. Buckle up. Don't, 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 don't. Bear, be careful. Oh my God, bear. Then you want, you want... 
bird? Were you rescuing little ducks? Yeah, I got three of them. <laughs> As you can hear, we just started charging. If I would have put in my complete billing address, it would have been even quicker, but I was having to do that on the spot here. Um, as you can see for non-Tesla vehicles, it is very short. There is no way I would have been able to pull in to the actual parking spot, which is located right here and get it over to charge. Because again, it's on the back uh, left-hand side, or back right-hand side, sorry, on uh, Tesla vehicles. So they want you to park in this spot here, and that way it's right near where it needs to be. If I would have pulled in straight into this spot, I might have been able to make it with that cord, but uh, uh, possibly not. Again, I started up my, uh, my roaming data, because I am Canadian, and uh, yeah, it... Uh, it started up nearly right away. I, if, if this thing charges, I can't say enough about Tesla and their network, so uh, stay tuned. So we just finished up charging. I will say that I had a little bit of issue stopping the charge. I really hope that everything is still... Like see how it's still allowing me to undock? I think something's wrong there, but um, it charged up. It took maybe about an hour and, a, hour and 20 minutes to get to 100%. But um, to get to like the first 80%, it took, what, 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. It was great. So uh, that was good, but I can tell that this thing still doesn't want to stop charging. Um, anyways, we're uh, heading down now to our hotel, which is near uh, the Pittsburgh airport. So it's about another two and a half hour drive. I think about 288 kilometers. So we will see you there. Okay, so we've just arrived in Pittsburgh, just outside of Pittsburgh at the airport. And we've got 38% left, 172 kilometers. And so far we've done 596 kilometers at 21 kilowatt hours. And again, I was hoping a little bit better than that, but 21 kilowatt is what we were getting. We weren't running any AC, this is just um, vented air and uh, yeah really no issues uh, it kind of took us for a little bit of a loop to get to this uh, hotel here but we're here in Pittsburgh hey guys and girls so we just went to a game at PNC Park and the Blue Jays won 8-2 over the Pittsburgh Pirates go Jays but what was even better than all that was this parking garage. So this parking garage is in the downtown area of Pittsburgh. It's right at the PPG building. Address is 238 4th Ave. And we just parked from 502, of course it's not gonna wanna focus, 502 to 2223, whatever the frick that works out to be. But uh, we parked for six hours. It cost us six dollars, and this parking or the charging, sorry, was free, absolutely free. It added on, um, I think, about forty percent. It added during that time. Uh, it's a very slow charger, but it's a free charger. So if you're coming into the downtown area, going to a Jays game, going to a Steelers game, boo, going to a Penguins game, park here, charge for free, amazing. Okay guys and girls, so we are heading out from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're heading to Gettysburg. We're actually going to drive to uh, a charger in Bedford, Pennsylvania, because we don't have quite enough range to make it to Gettysburg itself. Uh, although we did, managed to top up a little bit of our charge yesterday at the uh, baseball game. 
but uh, we've got 187 kilometers to our destination, 273 in the tank, and we'll hopefully top up there and set off from there to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So we'll see you there. <laughs> All right, guys and girls, we arrived safely at the Sheets and the Electrify America station here in Bedford, Pennsylvania. I used my app uh, to initiate the charge. As you can see, there is a card reader so that you could charge by credit card, but I decided to use uh, the app. I just turned my data roaming on, again, being Canadian and I already had everything set up within the app itself. I already had my payments in there and yeah, everything, it unlocked real quick or I, I mean, it initiated real quick. Um, yeah, so far so good. And again, only one here. Yeah, I just cautiously optimistic. I will say though that leaving Pittsburgh and going up through the mountains uh, it was basically an uphill climb the entire way up until the Allegheny Mountain. And then after that, it was basically all downhill. And, uh, you know, I was worried that we were only going to get here with 50% charge. We had actually gotten a warning saying that the uh, distance was critical to the charger. I think they were just given that warning because it would have been under the 80 kilometer um, distance that I've set for the battery. Excuse me. Uh, but as you can see, we rolled in here with, um, 
I believe it was 93 kilometers. We're already back up to 118 kilometers. So, I mean, everything's all good. We're gonna charge up here. We're gonna grab something to eat. We're gonna recharge our batteries. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get back on the Pittsburgh, sorry, the Pennsylvania Turnpike and uh, head to Gettysburg. So, as you can see, we've charged up to 98%. Fortunately, we're at the high end now, so we're only charging at 15 kilowatt hours, but charging costs $5.55. It was up at $6 before, but if it's at $5, I'll take it. So, very pleasant experience here in Bedford, Pennsylvania. And one thing I keep forgetting to mention that really drives me nuts is I wish that these stations had a way that you could actually wash your windows because the bugs are just crazy right now. But anyways, we're heading off to Gettysburg right now. <laughs> guys and girls so we've arrived in Gettysburg Pennsylvania we've got 76% charge on it 348 kilometers uh, we ended up taking quite a detour I don't know if I'll be able to really show you on here but instead of taking the highway we ended up taking this road right here um, very hilly very beautiful we burned a little bit of extra juice going up through the mountains, but then coming back down the other side, we actually saved a lot. Um, so I think if we would have taken the highway, we would have been probably down towards 50% if I had to guess. But um, we are here in Gettysburg. I hope you enjoyed the trip here so far. And uh, after this, we're going to be heading out to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs>
I didn't do a video from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to the King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Yeah, you heard me, King of Prussia. Um, we're here at the King of Prussia Mall and we're at the Electrify America station. Pulled up my Electrify America app. Uh, it started up right away and we're charging apparently at 162 kilowatts. This is the fastest I've ever charged my Mach-E and we're at a station where there's only one available spot we've got uh, we've got an Ionic 5 and then down there at the end is a Rivian so it's only the second Rivian I've ever seen in real life never seen one in Canada so that's pretty cool so what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge up as much as we can here we're about I think 20 miles from Philadelphia from our destination we're just north of Philly right now and we're gonna get this charged up. I was supposed to have about, I think it was supposed to have about 130 miles or kilometers, sorry, of range left. And when we got here, we were at about 26%. We've already jumped up to 31%. So for, for a Mach-E, this is charging at just lightning fast rates. It's dropped now to 119, 118 kilowatts. So I expect it to kind of drop back down to like 90 something. And I'd be perfectly happy with that. We're going to go get some lunch and we're going to head down to Philly. And we'll see you there. Okay, guys and girls. So we are in Philadelphia in the parking garage right down in the old city and we are heading for home. Home is 880 kilometers away, about nine hours. We are going to head due north. We're going to stop in Scranton, hit up a couple of, uh, well, they're not really sets or filming locations, but uh, filming locations for the office. We're going to hit that quick. Then we're going to head off to Binghamton, New York, charge up there. We're going to charge up in I think it's Batavia, New York. There's a supercharger. Head across the border and head back home to London, Ontario. Again, 880 kilometers, about nine hours. We're gonna see how quick we can do this while going the speed limits. So I hope you enjoy our trip back home. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we are in lovely Binghamton, New York. Just made the trip from Philly, stopped off in Scranton, and we are here now fast charging at Electrify America. We are currently at only 87, 88 kilowatts. I say only because it's a 350 watt charger. I was originally parked at this charger over here, which is 150 watts, but kilowatts, but I figured I'd park here and try to get some better uh, return. So far, it's not doing what I was hoping it would do, but um, yeah, and the app itself said that this was only a 50 kilowatt charger, not a 350. So I don't know what's going on there either. Uh, I really wish that it would charge at about 120. I'm not expecting 150, which is what the Mach-E can do. But uh, yeah, anyways. So as you can see, we're down to 41, 42 kilowatt hours. We're at 92% charged for 48 minutes costing us 28 bucks it's nice that it puts the total at the top not what it's currently charging at uh, unfortunately we had to pay for the 350 kilowatt charger to only charge at like 95 kilowatts but that's another story so we're heading up to uh, Batavia New York there is a Tesla supercharger up there and we're gonna charge up there will be enough to get us home and uh, it's about 305 kilometers away so we'll see you there <laughs> Batavia, I think I'm saying that right now, Batavia, New York, and we're at the Tesla supercharging center here. There's 12 units. Unfortunately, I had to park super, super sideways. Please don't chastise me. I really want to take the, the least amount of space that I could. Um, but unfortunately these cords are just too short for non-Tesla vehicles right now. So I tried to be as, as respectful as I could without taking too much room. We pulled in here, we had uh, about 80 kilometers. We, we were just about to hit the, uh, hit the actual uh, low battery warning. And uh, yeah, the hills and the, uh, the wind really, uh, did us in on this one here. I was hoping to have about 120, 130 kilometers of range left. In fact, I only had just over 80. I think it was 85 to be exact. So we're going to charge up probably about as much as we can. We're going at 122 kilowatt hours right now is what, uh, what I saw last. So that's one of the highest that I've seen. It's probably the third highest that I've seen ever. Uh, so praise Tesla for, uh, for their good charging network. So far, so good with Tesla. It wouldn't connect. Uh, there were some problems with the app. I shut it down, restarted it, went back in there. Everything was good. So really no, no big issues. Cheers, Tesla.
guys and girls. So it is now 10 o'clock at night. We have got 83 kilometers of range. Didn't even uh, sound the low battery warning. 19% left in the tank. We, again, left at 9.45 this morning. 10.10 10 tonight. Uh, ran into a little bit of traffic at the border. Obviously had to charge twice. Once at Electrify America, once at a Tesla charger. Uh, so that took a little bit of time. The trip to get home from Philadelphia to London was somewhere around the nine hour range. So by the time you add in, you know, border, uh, there was quite a bit of construction in New York state. Pretty much the whole, the whole state was under construction. Um, so by the time you factor all that in, like that's a good 12 hour day right there. And for this trip in total, so that's going to Pittsburgh, Gettysburg, and Philadelphia coming back home. We did 2,205 kilometers, um, about 30 hours worth of driving, and uh, the average was 20 kilowatt hours. I'd say that that's a little, little bit um, optimistic. We probably did 21, sometimes 22, depending on what was going on, but I'd say 21 is a closer number for the Mach-E. Uh, one thing I will say that when we did our last trip to Ottawa, right in the middle of our drive, the screen shut down and it basically what it was was a software update that we didn't even know about or a firmware update, whatever you want to call it. Uh, about five times the car asked me whether it wanted to update to the latest software and I kept saying no 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 and when I got in the car all the time like you could see that I was putting in destinations that were three four hundred kilometers away why would you ask me to do updates Ford like can you not just put like some kind of like little line in your software code that says hey if they're going on long trips maybe you don't do this because what happened is I said no and then turned the car off started charging came back in and it was in the middle of doing the software update but if i was going somewhere really quick just jumping in and grabbing food then i'm sitting in the middle of a software update you can't run your screen you can't run your navigation you can't run anything so just a little bit of a bugaboo uh, that ford needs to figure out but uh, besides that great trip again 2205 kilometers 30 hours in this thing um I'll have to figure out how many times we supercharged and fast charge, but it wasn't much. It was five or six times that we had to do, do a charge. So, um, yeah, very, very, very happy with this. If you're skeptical about getting an EV vehicle, don't. Um, you know, if you live in the United States and travel in the United States, no issue. If you live in Canada and do travel in Canada, no issue. And then if you do travel over the border, again, no issue. I just proved it here. The infrastructure is getting better and uh, knock on wood had no issues charging it was about as as simple as i, I thought it was going to be harder than that to be honest and it was simple 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 so if you're looking for content like this or about say charging or putting in dual chargers um maintenance on your vehicle how to jack up the vehicle uh even house maintenance, all that kind of stuff too. You found your channel. Think about hitting the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions at all, any question, even if it's not Ford Mach-E, it's just EV related, put it in there. I'll help you out as best as I can. And if I can, I'll point you in the right direction. That's what this channel is about. Cause with a little bit of knowledge, you never know unless you bear. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.